secret location. It's the Tom Likas Show. Okay, hold on. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Once again, Sarah Palin having to apologize for her comments this time. For what she referred to as the patriotic values of the real America and the pro-America areas of what she called this great nation. Oh, man. How stupid is this woman? What a maru. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866. Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes, Tom. Yes. <laughs> I, I want to make a comment about the, a few callers back. She said uh, to for your listeners to listen to other stations too, or read the paper. Yeah, don't you know, do that. Source, don't be doing that. Yeah, well, actually, she's correct though, because to get the no. best information, one must access antagonistic. No, and I I have read the papers. I am looking at the blogs and the websites. Right, but I've done the all the heavy lifting. I've done it. I've but distilled it all down. You don't have to go anywhere else. I am one stop shopping. I hear you, Tom, but you really got to get the full spectrum, and I'm nope, sure that you do your you're best. You're getting it to do right that. here. I but. already disregarded every moronic point of view, every idiotic attitude. I I boiled it all down to the essentials. Well, well, Tom, you know I I'll part with this. I do listen to your show every day on the way home from work, and you give great information. So I'm not going to argue with you on that. And I'm almost home right now, so you have a great day. Thank you. You too. No need to go elsewhere. We took care of it for you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time, long time. How's it going? Going great. Good. Well, I just um, I just wanted to make a comment about Sarah Palin. I actually had a question for you, but um, personally, I think that Sarah Palin is absolute garbage and that she's hands across the board a disgrace to American politics. However, um, I wanted to see why you thought um, McCain chose her as, as, you know, as a running mate. That well, be- I, I do believe it was a very cynical, Hail Mary pass thrown by somebody who thought he had uh, a likelihood of losing. Okay. And uh, when Hillary Clinton lost the nomination to Barack Obama, uh, McCain in his 72-year-old mind thought, well, maybe the little ladies would like it if I hired a woman to be my running mate. Yeah. Well, I think that's what it's all about. I don't know. It's just that, you know, like, how can a woman, I like, <clears throat> you know, like someone, one of your callers before said that, you know, if uh, Hillary Clinton would have got elected, then great, we would have supported her because she's not incompetent. But, you know, Palin's from, you know, she was a mayor and then she was a governor for like two years. And it wasn't like New York or, you know, California or anything. It was of Alaska. It's not even, you know, connected to the U.S. So I, I don't know. It just blows my mind. No, I uh, certainly agree with you. And like I say, uh, if you didn't catch it on the Daily Show last night, uh, go watch the report from Wasilla, Alaska, that okay. they did on the Daily Show and see what that place is like and see what the mayor's job entails. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Just go. It's on probably YouTube or who knows where, wherever they have the Comedy Central clips. Uh, go <laughs> find the clip from last night uh, about Wasilla. For sure. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Susan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Um, thanks for taking my call. Sure. I just wanted to find out if you were also playing the clip of Michelle Obama, you know, because her husband is now president as president. How for is the Michelle first Obama? Time, ru- wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on. Is Michelle Obama running for president? Is she a candidate? I didn't see that. Well, I, I think that when he brings she, her... Uh, no, no, no. Is she a candidate for president? Because I didn't see for that. For the first time, she's... I'm asking a yes or no question. Is Michelle Obama a candidate for president? Because I didn't see that well you know barack obama is, just, is that a yes or a no susan her husband is uh yeah but she but, isn't you, know, you don't think that is that a no i'm curious she's not a candidate is that right her husband, I'm, I'm asking you is she a candidate or not her husband sugar last chance to answer the question uh, none of your uh, nonsense none of your hot air is getting on the air until you answer the question is michelle obama a candidate for president of the united states Barack Obama. Again, thank you for calling. one 800 tom First, she lied to the screener to get on the air, and then when she got in, 
uh, refuses to engage in a conversation. You know, Sarah Palin can duck questions at debates uh, all she likes, and they can let her get away with that. But on this program, you're not ducking my questions. You duck my questions, you don't get to make your statement. It's that simple. Don't like it? Don't call it. Dumb. 1-800-5800-TOB. That's our telephone number. It's Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, uh, Tom, I'm living out here in L.A., and there's parts of this place that aren't even close to being America. You could drive really? down 20... How so? Well, I'll tell you, they don't speak English. That's one thing. And I know. Well, I... well, first of all, why does what language you speak have anything to do with whether you like America? Well, because they're not Americans living here. They're, they're here illegally. There's gang well, well, first of all, why do you assume that someone who doesn't speak English is an illegal alien? Well, I, I don't. I don't check their documents personally. I'm just. And, and, and by the way, I might add, there is no legal requirement that you speak English in order to be a citizen. And on top of that, many people who don't speak English uh, publicly actually do speak English. They're just not speaking it all the time, or they're not speaking it in front of you. Well, when when you're doing, maybe they don't want you to understand what they're saying. Well, that's probably true, but I, I, I'd like to... It doesn't mean they are not citizens, and it does not mean they're not patriotic. Well, if you've been to, you say you've been to New York. I've been to New York, and they are more gang areas in New York than they are here in L.A. It's just a filthy mm. place to live. Well, and, I, I agree that New York is a filthy place to live, and I don't happen to like it myself. That doesn't mean it's un-American. I've been to the Midwest, and there's places there that are, that are wholesome, they're clean. There, really? There's places like, that, like, like Milwaukee and Chicago? No, I'm talking like more. Uh, there's Colorado. There's Arizona has nice places, and I've been so to nice. So you, in order to be a patriot, you have to live in what you call a nice place. So I'm just agreeing with her point that there I'm are... asking you if that's the case. In, no. in order to be a patriotic American, do you need to live in what you call a nice place? No. In order to be patriotic, you do not have to live in a place you call a nice place. All right. So you could live in a city. You could live in a big city. Mm -hmm. You could live in a ghetto area of a big city. Correct? Yes. Great. But that, that still doesn't disqualify her point that there are places in America that are more patriotic than the big What cities. makes them more patriotic? Well, they don't deface public property. If you've been down to Los Angeles, you could drive blocks and blocks and I blocks. I live in Los Angeles. Do you see the graffiti on your way to and from work? I've seen graffiti a lot of places. Those, I saw graffiti in Madison, Wisconsin. So are, what? Are those, are those proud Americans writing on the buildings? And Again, uh, that doesn't prove that a neighborhood is uh, anti-American. It I just think, simply doesn't. I think you can't. I think you can't argue that she's right. Yes, you're no, wrong. no, no, no. You sorry, can't. Tom. You know, you can't argue it no. because the fact that there's a couple of children out there defacing property doesn't mean a neighborhood is unpatriotic. Uh, that is just a naive. What about the drug dealing? The, the, what about the, drug dealing? There's larger. Uh, sales of drugs in big cities than there are in, in that, uh, Wasilla, that Alaska, Wasilla, Alaska is a crystal meth capital, in case you're not aware of it. Well, if you, if you lived in... In, in, in case Boston, you're not aware of it, are, you aware, you. are yeah. you aware of that? Yes, but you know... That's that small that, town America, too, isn't it? Yeah, but crystal meth Yeah, but what? It's the crystal meth capital of Los Angeles. They moved Wasilla... To, uh, excuse me, well, to because Boston. there's less people there. That's why there's less crystal meth. If there was more people, there'd be more crystal meth. Well, the, your your argument is that that there are that that Wasilla is, is the crystal meth capital. My of Alaska. argument is that when people are dealing drugs, that doesn't mean the people who live there are not patriotic. Yes, it does. Why no, it doesn't. It does not. Children. American children. It does is that not patriotic? mean. But but you're assuming everyone's a drug dealer, and everyone is not. Uh, Tom, trust me. I know where you work. I know the area around there. You could walk. Where down. Where do I work? Wilshire Boulevard. You could walk. No, down. I actually I don't work on Wilshire Boulevard. You're wrong. You don't know where I work. I apologize. I thought you worked the same place as Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. Well, you but, have no idea where I work at all. You have no idea. We said at the beginning of this hour that we're coming from a secret location. You have no idea where we are. I apologize. Not. I didn't just talk. So to stop where... being so presumptuous. You don't know as much as you think you do. Stop being so smug. Well, I know around Wilshire Boulevard. You could walk. I don't work on Wilshire Boulevard. We're ninety-seven. I don't even work station. near. I don't even work near Wilshire Boulevard. We're ninety-seven point one. That not where you work, but where your your radio station is located. You can walk three blocks in any direction and buy drugs, and that's just a fact. And so what does it. that mean? Does that mean that the people who live on Wilshire Boulevard or Eighth Street or Ninth Street or Tenth Street are not patriotic? No, but I, I, the same can't be said in Salt Lake City, Utah, or in Phoenix, Arizona. This place is. Are you kidding me? I lived in Phoenix, Arizona for three years, pal, and I go to Phoenix regularly, and you have no idea what you're talking about. Phoenix is Phoenix, wrong. Phoenix has gangs and drugs. And, are you kidding me? Well, then we'll are add, you kidding me? We'll add are you kidding me? We'll add Phoenix to Palin's list, and we won't go there.
there either. You're a moron. You know what? You don't know what you're talking about, and you're just like her. All these places you've never go and you've never been, you just have a big mouth, flapping your gums, very opinionated. You don't need to go any place. You've already formed an opinion about everything. And you know my opinion's correct, and that's what no, you're I No, I, frankly, I not only do I not know your opinion's correct, I know the people listening know your opinions are not correct, and they've already decided. And uh, they and I agree. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Tyler on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Tyler. Long time, first time. How's it going? Thank you. Yes, it's going great. Hey, uh, add what you just said. I mean, I went to Chicago over the summer, and you know what? It, it is a lovely town. It is just absolutely perfect. I find it. I want to move there someday. I love Chicago. I love the people in Chicago. And Chicago is a diverse city. Uh, and the richness of that diversity uh, comes out in so many ways. And uh, I was just in Chicago last summer. I spent a weekend going with my brother to Wrigley Field, That's and what, uh, it was spectacular. Absolutely, I did the exact same thing. And you know what? Me and my me and my pops went down there, and it was just spectacular. And you know what? A lot of people say New York City is like one of the most unpatriotic cities. I went there too, and it's absolutely patriotic. It's a joke what these people are doing. Well, you know that there's some tinge of anti-Semitism when people are making a comment like that about New York City. Hey, I hate New York City. Uh, but the reason I hate New York City is because of the attitude, the arrogant attitude that is the center of the universe. Uh, but uh, if you think there's uh, uh, less than a tinge of racism and anti-Semitism when people make those comments, you've got another guest coming. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Shorter breaks than ever before is the Tom Likas Show. Can you believe that break? Three minutes of change. That's it. We're already back. We used to have seven-minute breaks on this show. The Tom Likas Show reaches here at 1-800-5800-TOM. This just came in 15 minutes ago. Many of you have seen it and sent it right in, and I'm flooded with these. This from the Associated Press just came over the wire. Governor Sarah Palin charged Alaska for her children to travel with her, including to events when they were not invited, and later amended expense reports to specify that they were on official business. <laughs> the charges included costs for hotel and commercial flights for three daughters to join Palin to watch their father in a snowmobile race. Taxpayers in Alaska pay for that. What a maverick. Also, a trip to New York where the governor attended a five-hour conference and stayed with 17-year-old Bristol for five days and four nights in a luxury hotel. Not making this up. In all, Sarah Palin has charged the state of Alaska $21,012 for her three daughters' 64 one-way and 12 round-trip commercial flights since she took office in December 2006. In some other cases, she has charged the state of Alaska for hotel rooms for the girls. Alaska law does not specifically address expenses for a governor's children. The law allows for payment of expenses for anyone conducting official state business. What official state business are her daughters conducting? Or her husband? Says here as governor, Palin justified having the state pay for the travel of her daughters, Bristol, 17, Willow, 14, and little Piper Palin, 7, by noting on travel forms that the girls have been invited to attend or participate in events on the governor's schedule. But some organizers of these events said they were surprised when the Palin children showed up uninvited or said they agreed to a request by the governor to allow the children to attend. No official business there. Several other organizers said the children merely accompanied their mother and did not participate. The trips enabled Palin, whose main state office is in the capital of Juneau, to spend more time with their children. That's not the taxpayer's responsibility or concern, is it? Jennifer McCarthy, 
who helped organize the June 2007 Family Day celebration picnic in Ketchikan that Piper attended with her parents said, she said any event she could take her kids to is an event she tries to attend. State Finance Director Kim Garnero told the Associated Press that she has not reviewed the Palin's travel expense forms, so she could not say whether the daughters travel with their mother would meet the definition of official business. How convenient. After Republican presidential nominee Senator John McCain chose Palin as his running mate and reporters asked for the records, Palin ordered changes to previously filed expense reports for her daughter's travel. You see what happened here? When she was chosen as the running mate, she went back and amended everything because she knew people would be looking this stuff up. In the amended reports, Palin added phrases such as first family attending and first family invited to explain the girl's attendance. Linda Perez, the state director of administrative services, said the governor said, I want the purpose and the reason for this travel to be clear. When Palin released her family's tax records as part of her vice presidential campaign, some tax experts questioned why she did not report the children's state travel reimbursements as income. Good question. Maybe the IRS ought to be asking that question. The Palins released a review by a Washington attorney who said state law allows the children's travel expenses to be reimbursed and not taxed when they conduct official state business. Okay. Taylor Griffin, a McCain-Palin campaign spokesman, said Palin followed state policy, allowing governors to charge for their children's travel. He said the governor's office has invitations requesting the family to attend some events, but he said he did not have them to provide. Get this. In October 2007, Palin brought daughter Bristol along on a trip to New York for a women's leadership conference. Plane tickets from Anchorage to LaGuardia Airport for $1,385.11 were billed to the state. Record show. And mother and daughter shared a room for four nights at the $707.29 per night Essex House Hotel, oh, oh, which overlooked Central Park. Events organizers said Palin asked if she could bring her daughter. Alexis Gelber, who organized Newsweek's third annual Women in Leadership Conference, said she does not know how Bristol ended up attending. Gelber said invitees usually attend alone, but some ask if they can bring a relative or a friend. Griffin, the campaign spokesman, said he believes someone with the event personally sent an email to Bristol inviting her, but he did not have it to provide. Record show Palin also met with Mayor Michael Bloomberg and Goldman Sachs representatives and visited the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> Here's another one. In January, the governor, Willow, and Piper showed up at the Alaska Symphony of Seafood Buffet, an Anchorage gala to announce winners of an earlier seafood competition. She was just there said James Browning, executive director of Alaska Fisheries Development Foundation, which runs the event. Griffin said the governor's office received an invitation that was not specifically addressed to anyone. <laughs> it was addressed to occupant, for God's sake. <laughs> when Palin amended her children's expense reports, she listed a role for the two girls at the function, quote, to draw two separate raffle tickets. In the original travel form, Palin listed a number of events that her children attended and said they were there, quote, in official capacity helping. She did not identify any specific roles for the girls. In July, the governor charged the state $2,741.26 to take Bristol and Piper to Philadelphia for a meeting of the National Governors Association. The girls had their own room for five nights at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel for $215.46 a night. Expense record show. Expense forums describe the girls' official purpose as, quote, NGA governors, youth programs, and family activities. But those programs were activities designed to keep children busy, a service attended by the NGA to accommodate governors and their families, NGA spokeswoman Jody O'Meer said. In addition to the commercial flights, the children have traveled dozens of times with Palin on a state plane. 
For these flights, the total cost of operating the plane at $971 an hour was about $55,000, according to state flight logs. The cost of operating the state plane does not increase when the children join their mother. The organizer of an American Heart Association luncheon on February 15th in Fairbanks said Palin asked to bring daughter Piper to the event, and the organizer said she was surprised when Palin showed up with daughter Willow and Bristol as well. The three Palin daughters shared a room separate from their mother at the Princess Lodge in Fairbanks for two nights at a cost of $129 per night to the state. The luncheon took place before Palin's husband, Todd, finished fourth in the 2,000-mile Iron Dog Snowmobile Race, also in Fairbanks. What a coincidence. The family greeted him at the finish line. When Palin showed up at the luncheon with not just Piper, but also Willow and Bristol, organizers had to scramble to make room at the main table, said Janet Bartels, who set up the event. The state of Alaska is already reviewing nearly $17,000 in per diem payments to Palin for more than 300 nights that she slept at her own home, 40 miles from her satellite office in Anchorage. She was paid a per diem to stay home. Tony Knowles, a former governor of Alaska, Democrat who lost to Palin in a 2006 bid to reclaim the job, said he never charged the state for his three children's commercial flights or claimed their travel as official state business. Knowles, who was governor from 1994 to 2002, is the only other recent Alaska governor who had school-aged children while in office. There was no valid reason for the children to be along on state business, said Knowles, a supporter of Democratic presidential nominee Barack Obama. I cannot recall any instance during my eight years as governor where it would have been appropriate to claim they performed state business. So there you go. Now the state of Alaska has been funding not only Sarah Palin's trips on what appear to be occasionally personal junkets, but also the trips of her daughters. Isn't that wonderful? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. The leaner, sleeker, faster moving... Out of control, Tom Likas Show, that's what it is. Kyle on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom, how you doing? Pleasure great. to talk to you. Doing great. I just want to thank you so much for teaching me how to read all the Associated Press, the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, the Wall Street Journal. And this is a perfect example how I caught this, read it. And I can't believe we have to pay for all this stuff. I think we should have, try child support services and get every dime back. What do you think? Well, it's up to the taxpayers of the state of Alaska uh, to do that, but uh, they'd be fools not to. Yeah, I think they should just yank it, seize their account, and get it get it out by tomorrow like they do everybody else, American citizen. Yeah, I'd like to see how Sarah Palin's got to respond to this. How she got to explain this? Uh, she's, she's in deep, Tom. Tom, I, I tell you, I just want to thank you. I'm I'm doing so well in my career, and I got a quick question for you. Yeah. Um, how do you um, how would you go about learning more to do better at public speaking? Well, uh, the best way to get better at public speaking is to do more of it. Really? Uh, yeah. So whether it be volunteering uh, to appear at uh, local events, standing up at a podium, that's that's the best way to improve. Over the years, that's what I did. Okay, because I, I just got a big uh, job interview and got landed a gig, and I'm going to be doing a lot of public speaking. I just needed some advice, and I figured, well, Pops, you're probably the best. And remember, when you speak, you are speaking to one. Speaking to one. Yes. I, I will definitely, definitely remember that. And uh, by the way, Tom, uh, Firefox, Orange County, Halloween night does not get any better. <laughs> Was it MILF paradise there? Oh, Halloween night, this coming up Halloween night will be unbelievable. You guys, no. <laughs> it is cougar heaven. I'm looking forward to it. I already got my hotel across the way. I'm going to be just like you, Tom. Got already got the beers on ice and the bottle of wines waiting across the street. Just drag them across and skin them right there. 
By the way, uh, MILFs and GILFs alike, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of your best students, Tom. I'm telling you, I, I got straight A's in your class. Sound good to me, Kyle. Well, thank you so much, Tom. And what was that again? Just remember you're speaking to one, correct? That's right. You see, you just taught me something. I appreciate it. Take me out African tribal style with a cougar on the end of it. Here you go, Kyle. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, 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 so penza. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here's Brandon on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, hello, um, Tom Likas. This is Brandon. Yes, yes, I know. Oh. I just said that. Okay. Um, I read something on the internet that was very interesting. It re it relates to the presidential election. I read something about the Mayan calendar, and it states on December twenty first, two thousand twelve, they say that Barack Obama. It's, you know, you're not getting that on the air, obviously. You're out. So good luck. By the way, moron, we've got your home phone number. <laughs> what you just did is criminal. Just ask our Tuki Sue what we do in those situations. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Maria on the Tom Likes show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. That's good. I just wanted to give a response to the gentleman that was on a little bit earlier, and he was talking about how um, cities like Salt Lake and Phoenix that they were pro-America and very safe to be in. Well, I lived in Salt Lake. I've also lived up above Phoenix. And especially in Salt Lake, I was completely shocked because I had never, ever in my entire life come across any gangbangers until I moved to Salt Lake. Now, were these Mormon gangbangers? Um, I'm pretty sure they were raised Mormon at some point in time. They were raised in the they, LDS? Yes, but they, I mean, <laughs> everywhere, even where I worked, where I lived, and I thought I lived in a very nice, quiet complex. And until one of my friends, her daughter, came over to visit, and she told me that, you know, oh, you got a lot of gang members out here. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? You know, everywhere. If I didn't know one personally, then someone who I knew knew somebody else. So it was just everywhere. I had never seen people so tatted up. I'd never seen people tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. And I was just totally amazed just being in Salt Lake City. Yeah, so I want, I want people to know that just because you're in, and I've lived in several states out in the Midwest, just because you're out there doesn't mean it's safe. And in the Midwest, I, I even lived down the street. One of the places where I had moved into, um, a house had just recently blown up because it was a meth lab in the basement. Quiet, quiet neighborhood, nice and quiet and clean, and meth was everywhere around that city. I think meth is more likely to be in small towns where people are bored. And I, I even lived in Montana, and in Montana they did other crazy things to get high, you know, so, and it's all quiet, it's beautiful there too, it's quiet, it, it was a different place, I enjoyed living there, but... Everywhere you go is going to be the same thing. It's just to what quantity. You live in a bigger city, you have more people, then there are going to be more of that kind of activity. There's going to be more of everything in that big city. Uh, Kevin is listening to us online from Concord, California, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tommy? Long time. Doing okay. That's good. Hey, I'm up here in the Bay just thinking about you guys and uh, all the ignorant people out there that don't know nothing about politics. They need to... Uh... Not listen to the Sarah Palin person and uh, Mr. John McCain. They, uh, <laughs> one of the things I've uh, learned in the last uh, 20 years of my life <laughs> is whatever's going on on the surface is not really what's going on underneath. And you can see the, the, the politics has just gone to the wrong side these past 20 years. So, and uh, I want to thank you for doing a great job out there in uh, – uh, down there in L.A., and all the people that think they're patriotic people are not all over, wrong. They're all over the world for Americans. So I just want to tell you that you're doing a great job, my friend, and uh, nice to talk to you again. Nice to talk to you. Thank you, Kevin. James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks. Long time, first time. Sure. 
Hey, you know what? For all these people out there who think that big cities cannot be patriotic, let me give you one fact. I've grown up, born and raised in Los Angeles, California, and this is a melting pot just like New York City. We've got every genre of every kind of humanity here, and I endorse it. I'm for it. I'm American, and this is the land of the free. If you can't deal with it, Go somewhere else, because this is what we do. This is how we exist. This is the modern Rome, and if people can't deal with it, they got to leave. And uh, that that is part of America. Big cities, small towns. Let's face it, Ellis Island is uh, in New York City. That, yeah. That's where it is. Yeah. And, and uh, many of the people who came through Ellis Island are some of the great contributors to our society, and it wasn't just in New York. People from Ellis Island fanned out throughout the country. And yeah. uh, you can't tell me that there's no patriotism there. No, I'm, I'm a first generation on my father's side, American citizen. On my mother's side, 17th generation. So on my mom's side, they've been here since the dang Mayweather came. Uh, or, or yeah, Mayflower came, but uh, other than that, you know, I, I I work with immigrants every day. I am the only American citizen born in my company on the floor of the factory I work in. Do I have a problem with them? No. They work their their butts off every day to make the dollar to support their families to live in this great country. And anybody who has a problem with it needs to go to a country that they come from and see how their lives are like there. I think you make some good points, James. I thank you for the call. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. From the requisite secret location, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. We continue with John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, John. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Pretty good. Yeah, man. I think uh, Sarah Payne is an idiot, bro. She's not going to win, and uh, she should just... And she should go to jail for doing what she did with her kids and stuff, man. And she shouldn't be, she shouldn't, um, be made to pay all that money back. Well, I agree that she should be made to pay all the money back. I don't know what the laws are in Alaska. And from that article I read, it's not clear to me if the law is clear on this, but it is certainly unethical and just plain wrong. And uh, not only that, going back and amending all the forms after she was uh, chosen as McCain's running mate. Outrageous. Yeah, no, she's, um, she's all She's all scared now, bro, because she knows she's not going to win. It's because of her that John McCain doesn't even have a chance anymore. All right, Tom, uh, take me out with the bong rip and piggy piggy stop. Here you go, John. She's a piggy piggy. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Nicholas is listening to our online stream in Seattle on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. How you doing, Father? Great, son. Hey, I've been really wanting to talk to you for a long time because I listen to you at night. I uh, can't get a hold of you then. But uh, I'm kind of pissed off right now. Um, there's a lot of people saying that black people are going to riot if Barack Obama is not elected. It's extremely racist. Um, and for everybody that says that, I'd like to, have the, I'd like to refer them to a YouTube video that I saw. Um, in Ohio, there was, a, there was a, um, a riot, basically, when Palin was talking, and they were like, Oh, Barack Obama's uh, terrorist. You know the name says it all, and just a whole bunch of middle, you know, you know, middle class, ignorant white people just saying how how much of a terrorist he is just because his last name is Obama, and it's crap. Well, I mean, these people are proving uh, what we've been saying about Sarah Palin and small town America and all of that. Uh, the American people have finally paid attention. They've finally woken up and paid attention. For years, people have asked me why I don't talk about politics on this show, and I said, it's because people aren't interested. Yeah, it's true. But all of a sudden now, people are interested. Uh, they have seen their jobs disappear. They've uh, been thrown out of their houses. Uh, they see the stock market cratering. Yeah. They see their home values plummeting. 
they are having a hard time getting car loans and second uh, mortgages and what have you. Yeah. And now the American people are scared to death. Yeah, and can I make one more quick point? Um, sure. ev everything that people are saying about Barack Obama, oh, he's not, you know, he's not experienced and he's, you know, stupid and stuff like that. All of those things that they're saying apply to Sarah Palin more they, than they do to him. And I just think it's ridiculous, man. I well, Barack Obama has something Sarah Palin doesn't have, a brain. Yeah, thank you for the agreement. <laughs> we both thank you. That. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing great. Uh, I just want, I've been listening to you uh, yesterday and, and today, um, and I love, I'm a political science major, so I love that you're talking about this. It gets me so excited, but at the same time, um, I just, I'm so disappointed by the people that are calling in and how little they know. And uh, the guy you just talked to is a perfect example talking about this uh, terrorist remarks in Ohio. Um, you know, the Secret Service did an investigation on that, and the word terrorist was never never mentioned once. And um, I, just, I, I wish so much that people who were actually so interested in this would, would really go out there and get on the news and find out what's going on out there instead of listening to this from hearsay, instead of just buying all the crap that they hear from everybody else, you know? Well, part of the problem, I think, is, uh, you know, more than ever, the Internet uh, is playing a part in people's involvement, engagement, uh, and it's where people are getting their information. Unfortunately, many of the people who get their information from the Internet don't know the difference between CNN.com and JoeBlowsBlog.com. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I mean, I walk around and ask people all the time, why do you think Sarah Palin was nominated or chosen and they all say oh so mccain can get the woman vote well you know that's absolutely ridiculous it's not because of that it's because the christian right told mccain if you don't pick a socially conservative uh, vice president we're not going to vote for you and he virtually would have lost without them well now they make him pick this, this sarah palin social conservative lady who's a complete moron and she's just a tool and a puppet and she's going to lose it for him anyways but you know, take a look at the Christian right out there in these ridiculous... Well, keep in mind, and I, I by the way, I, I, I do consider myself well-informed, and I do a lot of reading. Uh, there were apparently two specific political advisors to McCain um, who uh, advised him to try to appeal to the conservative core of the party. And apparently his instinct was telling him to go another way, but he followed the advice of these two advisors. And uh, now he's paying for it. Talk about talk about irony. I mean, McCain is so known for being a maverick and for being, you know, toward, more towards the middle, especially as a Republican. And at the moment he decides to run for president, he goes back to his conservative base. And it's, I mean, you're gonna. That's basically what lost it for him is going back to that conservative base. Honestly, if he would have just stuck to his guns, I think he might have well had this wrapped up. Well, I certainly think running against a, a black man. Um, I think he had a good opportunity to scare everybody. Uh, and again, I'm an Obama supporter. I, it's not, I'm not saying this because I'm, I wouldn't vote for a black man or because I have any problem with that. As a matter of fact, quite the contrary. I'm, I'm thrilled that a person of color has these kinds of qualifications and uh, that so many people are excited about voting for him, including me. But, uh, I do believe that McCain had the opportunity to scare Americans, uh, with this. And, in fact, I do believe when he first chose Sarah Palin, you saw it in the polls, you saw it in the uh, energized voter base of Republicans. It was starting to work until the stock market started crashing. And, and then all of it, mouth. that got everybody's attention. Absolutely. When people opened up their 401k statements for the period ending September 30th, 2007, and they saw that they lost 30 or 40 percent for the year, that scared the hell out of everybody. Yeah. I agree with you completely on that, Tom. And, and, and mainly, I just, I, I mean, you have so many people that listen to your show, and, and it's, it's the typical average American. It's really, I mean, not me. I'm, I'm a political science major, so I, I look up my sources all the time. I know more than the average American does about all this stuff, but I, I just would love your listeners. Please go out and search for yourself for these answers. I, I also am an Obama supporter. I work for the campaign here in California. Um, but some of the stuff I've been hearing for people who are for Obama, for their reasoning, for why they're voting for him, it's just, in my, it's just ignorance at the same time. You know, know what, know what you're voting for at least. And uh, and make a case out there for people who really aren't voting for Obama. That way you can really turn them. 
Chris, thank you so much for the call. Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing today? Great. All right. Um, I just wanted to say um, with the, the comments that uh, Sarah Palin made about uh, pro-America and anti-America, I think she could have been more tactful with what she was trying to say, but I, I also understand. I think I understand what she was getting at. Um, I'm a very you well... Under, you understand what she was getting at? Yeah, well, what she was trying to say. Um, I oh, think boy. that what she's trying to say is that people in the smaller towns, uh, it's easier for them to be on the same page and uh, there for there to be more of a team spirit. And, uh, you know, for someone who's raised... Nothing she small... said sounded anything like that. Well, but, but what she's trying to get at... That's what you that... would like to believe she was trying to say. But or, then if that's she... true, why why did she apologize for it? Well, I'm... Because because she offended a lot of people. Well, why but would it I be think... offensive if, if, if what you say is what she was trying to say? Why did she come out today and apologize? She didn't, because she didn't say it the right way. Uh, she's trying to say that people in the, in bigger cities, uh, they seem... Now, I realize that people in big cities are patriotic also, but in a different way. And the way they are, it seems like they're more individualistic. They're more of an individual rather than, like being a, a total team, you know, we're all Americans and we're all in this together. Um, you know, but I, I don't know. I, By the I, way, I where does John McCain reside? A small town? No, I mean, he, he's, he's in Phoenix as far as I know. Phoenix, Arizona. Right. I think in square miles, the largest city in America. Right. But, but here's the, but I mean, I mean. Palin so can't. so uh, would it be safe to say he's not patriotic? No, but see, on the same on the same note, I think he's running for president just because he thinks he deserves it, and I, don't, I really don't think that he could fix a lot of our problems. You know, partly because he's so old, but also because he he's in the rut. You know, the traditional Washington politician. Um, Obama, I respect him a lot. Uh, first of all, because he's humble. Second of all, because he's respectful of others, um, and. Uh, but he, I don't know. With him, the only thing that, that kind of throws me is that, you know, you see on the media a lot of the, the news coverage and the uh, the uh, documentaries and all that. It's, they seem to focus 80 percent of the time only on his personal life and not very much on the, the decisions he's made in his career. You know, that is not Barack Obama's fault. Thanks for the call. It's the Tom Likas show.